Now that we've seen how to create vector elements, let's take a look at their transform parameters to understand how we can alter them as well as enable and disable them. When drawing a shape, a path group that contains a path is automatically created, and it also contains a section called transform. This section contains the same transform parameters as a layer does. If we change the position parameter, this transformation will be applied to the entire path group. Click on the Generator button and select Reset Value. Click on the path group to define it as active and draw a second path which will be added inside of it. Here the Transform section, which is still unfolded, applies to the entire path group. If we modify the rotation parameter, changes will be applied to the entire path group, meaning they're applied to the two paths inside of it. But if we unfold path 1, there's also a Transform section. The position and anchor point parameters aren't set to zero, since the shape wasn't drawn completely in the center of the viewer. In addition to the path group transform section, there's also a transform section applicable to each individual path. These local transformations can be combined with more global transformations applied to the path group. This gives you very precise control over transformations, allowing you, for example, to apply rotations to a particular path before rotating the entire path group. This transform section works the exact same way as the layer transform parameters. It's possible to add animation keyframes, generators and modifiers, as well as share and link parameters. There's also an amount parameter that lets you define a weight for this transformation so that it can be balanced or even reversed. Here there's an enabled switch that lets you completely disable a path or path group as if it didn't exist. This parameter is also available for each path. Path groups are represented in the timeline in a special way. If we fold up these subsections and move up in the timeline, a block connected to the path group line is connected to the enabled keyframes. This block connected to keyframes may remind you of a layer block connected to visibility keyframes. By moving one of the block boundaries, the enabled keyframe will move as well. Just like with layer visibility, you can set several keyframes to the enabled parameter to make the block appear and disappear several times in the animation. It's important to understand that when you disable a path group, the vector elements that make it up won't appear, just as if they had been completely removed from the list. The fill style no longer has any vector elements to draw. Remember too that these enabled keyframes are also available for each path. Unfolding path 2, for example, will reveal these keys. The difference with paths is that no blocks are drawn according to these keyframes, so that it doesn't overcomplicate or clutter the view. By moving these keyframes, we can disable a path and re-enable it a little later. The word disable instead of disappear is very important, because this path simply no longer exists at a specific moment in time. If you use Boolean operations like difference, intersect, or exclude, completely removing a path can have a major impact on the rendering of your path group, producing interesting effects. In this video, we went over how to apply transformations to paths and path groups, as well as how to enable or disable them while animating their parameters.